Hello and welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about inner source with forks. We all love open source, you know, enthusiastic developers creating open source solutions, enthusiastic developers contributing to other open source solutions, and enthusiastic developers learning from each other. And then we look inside the organization and we see silos after silos, you know, very talented people working against each other, not talking to each other, you know, tech savvy business users creating their own solutions. Uh, IT sort of ops working dev against dev, devs working against ops. And you would sometimes wonder, you know, only if the goodness of open source could come inside these organizations, you know, they should be able to innovate at, at, a, at a greatly different speed. And this is what inner source is about. While it is a lot about the culture, it is also about the tooling. You know, wouldn't it be great if in your organization you could discover the projects, uh, figure out who's developing what, contribute to their packages, have a workflow that allows for collaboration and learning from each other. Uh, well, Azure DevOps provides a lot of that, and a lot of that is baked right into Azure repos. In this demo, we're going to go through the forking workflow and figure out how that works and enables internal open source. Let's get right into the demo. All right, so we're in Azure DevOps. Um, as a developer, um, you know, I I'm responsible for creating some infrastructure code for the project that I'm working on. But out of, out of curiosity, I come in to see if there are any samples of Azure deployments in place in any of the projects already. You know, that would kind of help me understand what a right structure for a deployment provisioning pipeline would look like or what a good template for provisioning would look like. Now, the code surge experience that, that is natively baked into Azure DevOps is a great enabler. Because sometimes the challenge is in, in finding where such samples of code exist. You know, physically, it'd be very hard for me to navigate into each of the projects, look at the uh, you know, amazing high number of code repos we have. Instead, I could leverage the syntactical code search that's available within Azure DevOps to quickly get to uh, the stuff that I need. All right, so let's, for example, search for Azure Deploy. And as I start my search, I can see, well, there are about 900 files that, you know, are a hit with the search keyword, but I'm probably only interested in a subset. So I can further build on this query to filter the result set down for only JSON-based files. And that cuts the result set to half. You know, right away, I can start to see that there seems to be a project called Operations that seems to have a lot of Azure templates. Navigating down, well, that seems to be a very hot project with a lot of uh, Azure templates in place. So let me just go in and, and investigate this project a little bit more. Um, as I come into this project, I can see that this project has a code repository. And within that code repository, they seem to have a lot of uh, deployment provisioning templates in place. Uh, let me read up a little bit about the project now. So I can go into their home page. And I can see that the project is kind of active. You know, there have been some pull requests. There have been some code changes in the project already in the past seven days. So people are still developing within this project. And they've got some guidance on contribution. Uh, it looks like uh, they're accepting people to contribute into their, their project and repositories as well. Um, you know, some base guidelines on things that you should do while you're doing contributions to this project. Well, that's fantastic. Let me quickly search if they have the template that I need already. So the template I need is for uh, being able to create an Azure DevOps um, using uh, an ARM template. Let's see if they have this already. Mm, unfortunately, they don't have a template like that. They do, however, have a lot of Visual Studio Team Services based templates. Um, how about I use their contribution guide to contribute to their project by submitting my own repository of um, uh, templates that they can benefit from. So, you know, when you kind of decide to go down that workflow, uh, the traditional way would have been for you to download all the code on your machine, um, get permissions from the owner of this repository uh, to submit your changes. But that sometimes can be quite intrusive, where they have to physically give you permissions on the project. They might have their own review and approval workflow. It might take longer for them to do it. Instead, with forking, which is an option available right up here, you need none of that. Instead, you're able to create a server repository of this repository that's already there, 
marked as your own space and then work against that repository to create the code changes that you need. And then at the end of it, submit the changes back in the form of a pull request. In that workflow, the owners of the Azure templates repository will have the opportunity to review all the code, assess whether uh, the contribution I'm making uh, is compliant to their standards, and if not, they can recommend some changes to it. So let's go about uh, seeing this in, in practical. So I'm forking the Azure Templates um, repository into another project called Parts Unlimited, and I'm only copying across the master branch. As now we're in the context of the, the project that we forked the repository in, I can come in and create a folder. So I'm creating a new folder and then creating a new file. I've already created a ARM template that uh, I want to submit. In the interest of time, I'm going to copy this and paste it in the new file that I've created. And then commit my changes. See, now that I've committed my changes in my own repository, in my own team project, it's giving me the opportunity to create a pull request to submit these changes back into the original repository. Right, so I filled out the new pull request form and I'm going to trigger the pull request workflow. As I do that, a new pull request workflow gets opened up and the owners of the Azure Templates repository would get notified, informing them that a new pull request has been raised. So let's navigate back into their view to see how the, how the workflow would work from their point of view. As you can right away see that um, they're able to see that a new pull request has been opened up. They can come in, see the pull request, see the files that I've changed. And this is where the collaboration aspect comes in. You know, as, as the person who's managing that repository, they right away know that the template doesn't abide to best practices. For example, in the parameters that are being passed in the ARM template, you generally tend to use the metadata a field to specify the purpose of the variable. So they could use that as an opportunity to provide that feedback to me, where I can come in, uh, where they can come in and provide some comments around the use of meta tags. So that feedback's been provided. Now if I flip back into my own view, you can see that I can see the feedback that they've provided. Again, for me, who's creating a template for the first time, this is, this is quite useful as I can start to use this 
uh, feedback in the future templates that I create. And I could act on this by going in and fixing it uh, and then republishing the changes which would notify them. And this feedback loop and constant um, going back and forth on improving the solution is helping us overall to improve the product and improve our knowledge. Now, as I mentioned before, you know, Git forking is, is quite an intuitive way to bring that open source culture within the organization. A lot of that depends on trust, but it depends on being able to search, being able to find, and having a culture of improvement. And Azure Repos provides you quite an opportunity to apply all of these within your organization. So I encourage you to go and try out Azure forking uh, within, uh, within Azure Repos.